So the purpose of this poster is to explain to patients how uh, posture, movement, balance, and stability are really, um, really depend on how the brain can answer two questions. First is, where am I in my environment? And second is, where is the environment in relation to me? And the way that the brain answers those two questions is using four primary systems. The visual system, the auditory and vestibular system, and the somatosensory system. So basically the brain gets information through the visual field, through sound, through motion, and also through uh, proprioceptors in our joints and our muscles, in our spine, receptors in our skin. And all that information comes into the brain, and if that information is coherent, uh, and, and that basically means that all four systems bring information that match and that sync together, then the brain can answer these two questions really well and give you good posture, good movement, good stability, and great balance. And so the problem comes when one of those systems is not functioning at its best and it doesn't match information, uh, the information that comes from the other systems. And when that happens, and it could be due to an injury or uh, other possible causes, uh, it could be a developmental problem. Uh, when that happens, uh, the, the systems become out of sync. And so one system, for example, the, the motion sensors may say, you know, we're, we're, we're moving in a certain direction, and the visual system may say, no, we're, we're still. And so when you have a mismatch is when the body has to compensate. So the brain has to compensate, and as a result of that, the body has to compensate. And that can affect posture, it can affect digestion, it can affect really all systems in the body since they're all controlled by the brain. So when I use this chart to um, talk to patients, what I, what I explain to patients is, is what I found in my exam. And if I found a, a finding that indicated that the cerebellum was deficient, for example, on this side, this would be the, the left side, then I would put an arrow down like that. And uh, for every finding that I describe, I put an arrow. Um, and, you know, I, I may have found some left brain findings, but generally speaking, we find that, um, you know, the blue areas, which are hardwired together, will have more common findings. And, of course, if you are dealing with trauma, in, in those cases, you, you may find more findings that don't really relate to each other. Uh, but in a case where one specific deficiency leads to others, you know, in a case of diascasis, where one weakness affects other areas that are connected to it, you'll find that all the, the areas that have the same colors will be affected and also deficient. So the neat thing about the eyes here is, is that we've color-coded uh, the uh, muscles that are controlled by the blue areas of the brain, and so you'll see that they are in blue, and the left cerebellum basically uh, will control or affect eye movement in a diagonal plane down into the right and uh, yeah down into the right and up into the left. And so if you really want to affect those two areas of the brain, left cerebellum, right brain the most, the purest motion would be a di diagonal plane uh, up into the left and down into the right, which I've circled it here. Um, if you find uh, eye muscle weaknesses and, and let's say for example in this case the inferior oblique there might be a head tilt associated with that. Um, it's really helpful to just look at the color of the muscle that's weak and see which areas of the brain are linked to it. There's a little red R as well, and the red R indicates that the right side of the midbrain is the area of the brainstem that controls that muscle, and that might be affected as well. So these are all just little, little helpful hints to help you work through explaining to your patient and connecting all the weaknesses and, and uh, all the deficiencies that you find in the exam. So, some of the related findings here, um, let's say there's cerebellar, um, you may find um, loss of balance to the left, or you may find some more weakness on the left side of the body, and maybe less accuracy using the left side of the body. So all these findings here would be a left cerebellum finding. Um, here we put the um, vestibular nuclei there. Um, the, the bottom one here is the spinal vestibular nucleus. I like to use that one as um, a, a link, you know, to link 
uh, brainstem findings to the spine. So since we most of us see a lot of chiropractic patients, um, this is the area of the brainstem that controls and stabilizes the spine, and it does that involuntarily. It's an automatic uh, process. So it's important for patients to understand that these nuclei control eye movements as well as spinal stability, and they're completely intertwine and, and, and do affect one another. So this is really the heart of integration when it comes to motion, when it comes to posture, balance, and stability. It's, it's in the brainstem. And so um, there's a lot of different ways that you can, you can use this chart, but this is grossly um, or roughly how I use it, and uh, I like to make those connections here um, for, for the patient and explain to them you know, how that relates to their symptoms and how that relates to their objective findings. Um, if you've got more questions, feel free to email me or contact me, and I'd be happy to um, elaborate on it. Thank you.